We are conducting these special sessions from February 22nd till February 28th, 2022. Just providing you a brief overview of these sessions on skill development. So yesterday, that is on 22nd February, we discussed about the sector that is beauty and wellness. And the job role was assistant beauty therapist. Today's session is for class 10th. And today the sector that we are going to discuss about is really very important and responsible one as it's about private security and the job role is unarmed security guard. Well, on 25th of February, we'll have an interaction regarding the sector that is power and the job role will be consumer energy meter technician. And on 28th February, that is the concluding day, the sector remains automotive for class 11 and the job role is automotive service technician. Well, today we are going to discuss about this important job role that is unarmed security guard. And to provide more information regarding that, we are also joined by an expert. So let me introduce you to Dr. V.S. Malhotra. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Welcome to the good session. Afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. A very warm welcome to the session. Thank you. Sir is professor and head at Curriculum Development and Evaluation Center. PSS Central Institute of Vocational Education has joined in from Bhopal. Viewers, well, our live interaction will run for entire one hour till 1.30 p.m. If you have any of the questions, feel free to write to us in the comment section of NCERT official. Besides, here is a contact number flashing on your screens. You may note this number that is 8800440559. This particular session is running on PME with their channel number 9 to 12. But if you have any of the queries and your queries or feedbacks or messages remain unanswered so kindly note this mail id as well that is dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in well dr mehrotra let's quickly get started with this session where we are going to discuss about unarmed security guard and if i am not wrong i think it's a very responsible profession true uh, thank you simran uh, for a great beginning that you have made uh, about the security job role that we are going to discuss today. And as you have rightly said, that it's a very important and a very responsible job that a person does in his or her place. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, tell you the viewers about the meaning of security. You know, when we say uh, I'm secure, that means I'm feeling safe and I'm free from worry. And this is what the security guard provides. As we all know that there are two major securities, like home security and national security. So when we talk about home security, uh, it's more localized. But when we talk of national security, it's more globalized. So there are two major dimensions of security. So when we talk of home security, then we have police, we have private security guards. So here what we are going to talk about is the private security guards. That is the job role of unarmed security. There's another job role of armed security guard, which we are not running in our schools because it's, it deals with the arms. So we are not actually introducing it in our schools. But then if you have looked at the uh, places like banks, ATMs and all, there the armed security guards are deployed for providing security because cash transactions and all those things are involved in that. Even in industries you will find both uh, unarmed and armed security guards. So coming to the security back again, uh, there are five major aspects which uh, everyone should try to understand uh, when they are dealing with security particularly that there are policies with regard to the securities and there are acts also um, which actually defines the various aspects of the private security. Now when we talk of uh, policy, uh, the policies are intended to uh, develop economic, uh, physical, ecological and other conditions of security. There are protective systems now available. You must have heard about uh, CCTVs. Yeah. So these are the major instruments now which are being deployed in various places. 
which help us to identify the thief. If some theft is taking place, then we can actually view these uh, incidents and then, you know, catch the thief. So, similarly, locks that we do, you know, we put in our doors, uh, the fence, the walls. Uh, when we talk of computers, then we have antivirus software, then air defense systems. So these are the protective systems that we have. Then the warning systems, um, like, like alarm. Yeah, Mehrotra, sir. Yeah. I just have a small question. Uh, sir, are you running the PPT now itself? No, no, no. Okay, so I'll all be, right. So I'll be coming to that because I'm just giving an overview of the oh. different aspects. All right, sir. That's fine. Yeah, security. Oh, yeah, you may, so that, you may proceed. So that the viewers get an idea of what are the different aspects of the security. And then I'll be going to the job role. Uh, so we have alarm systems. We have radar systems, which are the warning systems. And then one of the very important aspects with regard to the national security is the diplomatic and social action. Uh, that means the actions intended to prevent insecurity due to conflict. Now coming to this, the job role, the specific job role of the unarmed security guard. As uh, Simran, you have rightly said that uh, he or she is a very responsible person and has to take care of the security of the place uh, the facility and the people. So there are various uh, roles and responsibilities of the unarmed security guard which we are going to talk. So now I'm uh, going ahead with this presentation and you can see the content slide here. So the unit one deals with the duties, personal safety and hygiene. It has two sessions. Uh, session one talks about duties and responsibilities of an unarmed security guard. Session 2 deals with the maintaining personal safety and hygiene at the workplace. Then the second unit uh, is on tackling hazards and emergencies. Session 1 is on hazards and session 2 is on emergencies. And the unit 3 is solely on documentation. So these are the three units of this textbook on unarmed security guard. In unit one, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, discussed about the duties, personal safety and hygiene. Now, when it comes to the duties and responsibilities of an unarmed security, we need to first understand uh, how these duties and responsibilities are being regulated. And that is why, uh, going back to my initial uh, sentences, I talked about policies and acts because they regulate the various uh, aspects of the uh, security. So just like in education, we have now National Education Policy 2020, which recommends many aspects uh, with regard to the implementation of educational program and the vocational education. And there's been a lot of focus now on vocational education. So uh, similarly in security, we have policies and acts. So this Private Security Agencies Regulation Act, PASARA, uh, PASARA if, you, if I say the acronym, uh, PASARA 2005 defines private security as security provided by a person other than a public ser servant. Now why this has been mentioned? That police is a public servant. So besides police, the person who is providing this kind of security, comes under this act, that is the Pasara Act of 2005, to protect or guard any person or property or both, and includes the provision of armored car service. Now, this is the definition of the security which has been given in the Pasara Act. Now, coming to the uh, private security guard, so that also has been defined in the act. A private security guard is a person who provides private security with or without arms to another person or property of work. Now, again, uh, if, if you remember in the introduction, I talked about the armed and unarmed security guard. As I said, we haven't included in the schools this armed security guard job role because of the 
Again, I would say the security purpose of our children. So, uh, we are just talking about the unarmed security guard. But for an unarmed security guard, what is very important is the learning the self-defense techniques. Now, here I would like to mention the, uh, the techniques which are used by Israelis. You know, the defense system of Israelis uh, is very well known. They are very good at the defense system that they have created, both in terms of the technology and self-defense. So here the unarmed security guard should be very well trained in the self-defense system. So Krava Maga is one of the techniques which Israeli defense forces and the Israeli security forces had developed. And it's a combination of techniques uh, sourced from boxing, wrestling, judo, Aikido and Karate. So they have actually developed this kind of technique uh, in which all these combinations of boxing and all uh, judo and all has been utilized to define this particular technique of Krava Maga. So this is where uh, we have to train our personnel, the security personnel uh, into these kind of techniques so that uh, even if they don't have arms, they can handle a person properly. So this is why a security guard has to have a healthy body and should be very well trained in the self-defense techniques and also handling the customers or clients or visitors, how to manage. So the PR aspect of it, public relation aspect of it also has to be, uh, you know, trained, they, they have to be trained in that PR. Now, an unarmed security guard has to have uh, all those kinds of duties. So they perform a number of duties as the person is responsible for saving the lives of people and protecting the property one is guarding. Thus, the main responsibility of the unarmed security guard is to protect the life and property of the people. Now this is one very important aspect. The main responsibility is to protect the life and property. So there are two important aspects that one has to take care of. Then uh, how do the security guard perform these duties? So by observing and reporting. So this is one of the responsibilities of the unarmed security guard. They need to maintain notes of all activities and events that are taking place in the area or premises. And uh, they need to report it to the supervisor or the concerned official or the authority. The second aspect uh, which is safeguarding people and property. The guard must take note of unusual incidents in order to maintain the safety and security of people and property. Then the third is dealing with hostile crowd. So while dealing with the hostile crowd, the unarmed security guard must always be polite, calm and patient and communicate convincingly with influential members of the crowd. Now, in order to discharge these responsibilities and duties, the guards need to be trained on various aspects of soft skills also, not just the hard skills. But they need to be trained on, on the soft skills. And that is why uh, in some of the curriculum which has been developed by the various training institutions or colleges or universities, they have included uh, aspects like yoga, meditation uh, into the curriculum so that the guards can be trained on these aspects. Even for the army and uh, navy and all uh, other armed forces, the police, we need to include these aspects like the yoga meditation because that brings about the inner peace while they are discharging their duties they are cool and calm and they can work efficiently uh, without any health hazards and that is very important so we need to also take care of the safety and health of these people who are protecting us so that's a very important aspect that we need to emphasize to our textual material and that is what we have done by including these aspects in the textbook of class 10. 
so they have to communicate convincingly with influential members in the crowd now coming to the uh, other aspects so the fourth uh, responsibility we would say is the traffic management you must have seen in the uh, premises of facilities uh, I, I would say in for example in crt campus you might have seen the guards actually controlling the traffic at the gate and they stop the visitors or the people who are getting in on motorcycle or cars or any other vehicle trucks and all so they are stopped there they are asked for their identity and they have to uh, take note on the register the identity of that person the contact details and names and all those things have to be written over there so the person must be able to identify the traffic signs particularly in relation to pedestrians and bicycle facilities intersections traffic signals parking roadside safety and roadway lighting now why they know, they should know because the question can come here that if they have to stand at the gate why they need to know about all these traffic signs you know but at times these private security guards they are called by the police because we all know that the number of policemen that we have in our country is much less than what is required uh, as per the number of people that we have now in order to uh, you know fill that gap uh, sometimes private security guards are called for traffic management particularly when some vip is passing by through some route then they are uh, called to do the duties so they should know about all these traffic signs uh, the the facilities the intersections and all those things that they should be able to identify then coming to the visitors management that is another uh, responsibility of the security guard uh, let's first try to understand what we mean by the visitor management so it refers to guarding visitor and vehicular movement at the entry and exit gates uh, sentry posts and watch towers of the premises and carrying out patrolling duty now uh, we have seen that when we have visitors in the campus that the guard should do that patrolling should see whether some unwanted activities are not going on so if they are going on they should report it immediately to the supervisor so this is all he has to ensure when he or she is doing that uh, visitor management now coming to the dealing with aggressive visitors now this is another uh, duty and responsibility of the security guard now at times uh, we have seen like people come who are very aggressive or angry or annoyed and this generally happens in retail stores or some places where people are annoyed with the kind of product they got the services were not proper or in hotels and many other places where aggressive visitors are there and they don't behave properly and they have to be handled by the security guard so the security guard needs to be trained on how to handle complex situations and that's very important aspect because if he or she is not able to do that then he would he or she would be failing in his or her duty so a training is being given how to handle aggressive and emotionally disturbed people and how to you know bring them to a place where they can be given some water they can be cooled down they can be asked what is the problem the issues and those issues and problems can be re resolved by the concerned person while the guard is sitting over there or standing over there to deal with that person so this is how we need to train on all these duties and responsibilities uh, of the security guard dealing with alcoholics or drug guards this is another problem this comes in various other places like uh, bars casinos and all where security guards are there and they have to handle such persons uh, all the time so how to deal with such alcoholic or drug addicted persons tactfully and with all precautions uh, the, so students are being rightly trained on these aspects now coming to the do's and don'ts while dealing with aggressive vis visitors or drug addicts the students are being trained on what are these do's that they have to 
and what are the don'ts that they, they have to be careful about. So the first thing is that they need to show concern about the persons. Be polite, calm and helpful. Reassure the person that all possible help would be provided. Seek help from the authorities concerned. Then the don'ts are like do not offer food, tea or coffee to the person as it may cause choking or vomiting. Do not administer any sort of medication to the person. Do not induce vomiting and do not allow the person to drive a vehicle. Then what are the professional qualities that the guard should possess? And that's very important aspect besides the duties and responsibilities. So the professional abilities or professional grooming can be done by demonstration. And this is what we are emphasizing in our schools now, so that we can uh, come out with trained guards who can really do justice. That when we talk about social justice, then it comes to all these people who are being trained in different domains or different sectors. So uh, like in physical education and sports, when the students they play, they play in a team and they learn about teamwork, cooperation, you know, the respect for each other. Similarly here also, the guard has to be a team player. So he, he or she needs to work with one's colleagues in order to secure the premises of a facility. He should also know the meet and greet procedure. So when visitors are coming in, he should know how to greet the visitors, like good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, good night. All these things need to be you know, told. Namaskar, Ada, Sasriyakal. So the greetings has to be there. You know, they, they should learn all these things. So depending on the, sometimes the person who is entering into the premises, he, or needs, to, he needs to change the greeting and all. So the meet and greet procedure uh, should be there in terms of the training uh, in all the uh, syllabus that we have. Uh, not just this unarmed security guard, but also for, the, uh, for promoting customer relations. So maintaining public relations. Now coming to this, uh, another very important aspect where the guard must be able to maintain public relations because he's the first person there at the gate who actually, uh, I mean, the behavior whom, of whom would actually reflect on the organization's uh, either performance. So the way he or she greets a person uh, would make a lot of difference. So the guard must be able to maintain public relations, which is the act of managing and spreading information between individuals, organizations, and publics. So uh, coming to the professional qualities again, uh, we have talked about uh, in this textbook the respect uh, for people's right to dignity. So when the unarmed security guard is dealing with various public, one must ensure that one's action never goes against the right to human dignity. He or she should be very sensitive to the gender, to people, uh, to, to children with special needs, to children with different disabilities, the beyonds, what we call. So uh, they should also provide wheelchair. When they see any the beyond there, they should provide wheelchair to them uh, when they are entering into the premises help them uh, in whatever way they can. So that that kind of uh, message should go that this organization actually respect each and every one. So the unarmed security guard must assure that uh, the visitors are not harassed or treated harshly during the security checking. They should also respect the right to privacy. While frisking an individual or searching a person's baggage or vehicle, the security guard must be mindful of the right to privacy. Now, session two, which deals with maintaining personal safety and hygiene at the workplace. Yeah, sir, now, we, before we proceed to that session, just a slight information for all our viewers. We still have 30 minutes left in this session. So all your questions, your messages and feedbacks are invited in the comment section of NCERT official. Sir, you may proceed. Yeah, thank you, Simon. 
So uh, I was talking about how to maintain personal safety and hygiene at the workplace. And this is another responsibility of the unarmed security guard that they need to anticipate potential threats in the premises and take appropriate action. They should be vigilant and alert. Beware of the surroundings, what is happening around and all. Immediately report about persons, things, and situations that seem to be suspicious. And on the other side, they should prepare a daily schedule, keeping in mind the safety aspects and risk. Be in regular contact with the colleagues and supervisors over the phone. Quickly move to a safe place in case of risk to personal safety. They should also monitor the premise with the help of a closed circuit television or the monitoring system that is installed in the premises. Then uh, coming to the uniform, personal hygiene and appearance. This is another dimension where the security guard has to look at when they are uh, you know, performing. So we are training students on these aspects about the uniform. So the security agency specifies the uniform and badge to be worn by the security personnel. And the uniform should always be clean and ironed so that they, they look smart. And this aspect needs to be taken care of in our security uh, system. It's very important because this brings up a drastic change in bringing out these people into the forefront of the society, where not just they need to be economically elevated, but they should be given a due recognition in the society. And this can be one of the factors which can get them due recognition in the society. Hair care. So they must keep one's hair clean and combed all the time. They should look very professional in their presentation. Hand hygiene. Maintaining hand hygiene is of utmost importance, especially in these times of COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so we are using uh, various cleaning agents, including uh, you know, the soap and all that alcohol and all those things can be used for maintaining that hand hygiene. Oral care. Maintaining oral care as a person may sometimes have to interact with people at a close distance. So they should always brush their teeth and uh, maintain oral hygiene. Uh, personal hygiene and appearance also includes taking bath regularly. So daily, especially before coming to the work. Feet care, uh, because they, uh, they have to do long standing so because of the long standing hours, they, they might have health issues with regard to their uh, feet. So they have to maintain uh, that you know, kind of health. Uh, so avoid intoxicating products. They should not you know, take alcohol or other intoxicating products, uh, especially during the working hours or the duty hours. They need to perform uh, physical exercise daily. Now coming to the unit two, which is on tackling hazards and emergencies. In this, uh, again, we have session one on hazards, which is, so I would first uh, uh, give the definition of the hazards. It's, it's, it's very generic in that sense that every student should know about the meaning of hazards because we are facing it in our life. This is also a hazard like we have seen the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So a hazard refers to a situation which is dangerous or has the potential of causing damage to life or property. Hazard, hazard may broadly be classified into natural and man-made hazards. Now what are those natural hazards? A natural hazard has the potential of causing natural disasters like cyclones, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, uh, even the pandemic. So pandemic can be natural hazard or can be also a man-made hazard as we are now uh, envisaging that uh, it is a man-made hazard, this COVID-19 pandemic. So these occur because of the human negligence or accidents. And it includes explosions, accidents, industrial mishaps, uh, fires, cyber and terrorist attacks, etc. 
Now, what are the different uh, classification of hazards? So, ergonomic hazards. These are caused due to faulty sitting postures, uncomfortable chairs, inappropriate usage of tools and equipment, etc. And that is why a lot of uh, work is now being done in terms of designing such ergonomic tools and equipment so that people they don't uh, face such health hazards. Now we also have uh, ergonomic chairs uh, which actually helps us to get over this kind of hazard of health hazards. Geological hazards, these occur due to volcanic activity and movements in the tectonic plates, for example, landslides and earthquakes. Metrological hazards, these occur as a result of processes in the atmosphere, for example, extreme temperatures and droughts. Biological hazards, and we can see now the because of this virus. So these are caused by living organisms like bacteria, viruses, insects, plants, birds, animals, and animals. Uh, swine flu, for example, like COVID-19 we have. So these are the biological hazards that we are facing. Hydrological hazards, these are identified by extreme events associated with water processes like its movement and distribution. Hydrological hazards also include droughts, tsunamis, floods, etc. Chemical hazards occur because of the chemicals or chemical reaction. Then physical hazards psychological or cognitive hazards and safety hazards. So a uh, security guard should know about all these kinds of hazards because the he or she is the first responder. So whatever happens, like for example, if fire takes place, then what the guard needs to do. And I'll be coming to that in the later section of this presentation. So physical hazards uh, can be due to uh, exposure to the magnetic field, pressure extremes, noise. Ex psychological or cognitive hazards can be caused due to violence, excess pressure, and conflict at the workplace. And safety hazards could be due to slipping, tripping, inappropriate handling of machines and equipment or their breakdown. Now you must have seen that uh, now it's becoming very common that we have back problems, the spinal, pains and all those things. Why this is happening? Because of our posture, the, the wrong posture that we have adopted in terms of sitting, standing and all those things, the lifestyle. So the guard also should learn about all these things. So that we are training our students on this when they get into the security, whether it's army, air force, navy or police or private security guard. They should all learn about these kinds of hazards and how to prevent these hazards, how to cure the issues related to the hazards, all these things that they need to learn. So hazards are common at workplace and some hazards may be communicated verbally to the supervisor, while some may require the unarmed security guard to duly fill in a hazard report form and submit it to the concerned authority. Acute hazards must always be reported to the supervisor or workplace health and safety officer immediately. So we have also given uh, the hazard, sample hazard report form in the textbook. So that the students, they learn about what are the various aspects that needs to be included in the form. So as you can see here, we have given a sample form here. Uh, and students would be learning about this, how to fill this form. Coming to the session two, which is on emergencies. So an emergency is a sudden and unexpected occurrence requiring immediate action. An emergency situation may pose a threat to life and property. So in case of an emergency situation, government, non-government organization and voluntary association or agencies can carry out immediate response and relief measures which may include taking control of and handling the situation, carrying out search and rescue operations, and providing food, clothing, shelter, first aid, and medicines to those affected people. You know, here I would like to give you my own story. You know, uh, way back in something around <clears throat> 2003 or so, I was traveling in uh, Punjab Mail, and a uh, a uh, fire happened there in one of the coaches. And I was there in the AC coach. 
Suddenly in the night around 3.30 a.m., uh, <clears throat> a lady shouted that uh, uh, aag lag gai, aag lag gai, aag lag and we were all awake and we came down from our birth and just saw but when we peeped outside uh, the door we saw keep uh, the but the the you know hawa jo thi wo puri uski engine ki taraf se ja rahi to isliye piche ke dabbe kam jal rahe the aage ke zyada jal rahe the and it was a horrifying experience i mean you all must have seen that burning train jo movie aayi thi उसमें वैसे ही दिखाया था बहुत कुछ कि क्या होता है उस समय कैसे उसमें बच्चे ट्रैवल कर रहे थे और टीचर ले जा रही थी बच्चों को इसी तरह हमें वो एक्सपीरियंस हुआ कि ये क्या हो रहा है तो आग लग गई अब कैसे बचेंगे सो आई थॉट इट्स माय लास्ट मोमेंट आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू लिव एनी मोर बट नेवर दी लेस द ट्रेन स्टार्टेड यू नो स्लोइंग डाउन एंड इट्स स्टॉप एंड वी कुड ऑल गेट डाउन बिफोर द फायर कुड गेट टू आर कोच तो वो एक ऐसा एक्सपीरियंस था कि जो लगा कि ये किसी के साथ ना हो ऐसा बट देन उस समय कैसे लोगों ने रिस्पॉन्ड किया वो देखने को मिला कुछ लोग चलती ट्रेन में जो स्लो डाउन हो रही थी कूद गए उनको बहुत चोटें आई उनको ये लगा कि अगर ट्रेन नहीं रुकी तो हम सब जल जाएंगे एंड दे स्टार्ट जम्पिंग आउट ऑफ द ट्रेन तो इसीलिए कह रहे कि जो आपने पहले बात करी थी हमने थोड़ा सा ऐसी सिचुएशन में how we need to react what because it all depends on decision agar aapne zara sa bhi galat decision le liya to wo ghatak sidh hoga aur sahi decision liya to aap aapki jaan bhi bachegi aapko chote bhi nahi aayega so this was a lesson for me then what happened that the train was taken to the other the station which we had already left earlier in maharashtra and there the ncc cadets and all jo the unko deploy kiya gaya tha and pura emergency management hua wahan pe logo ko food supplies hue packets mein jo hai khana diya gaya and it was a, such a experience which i always remember because un bachcho ne itna jo hai sabke paas ja ja ke khana diya unse baat cheet kari sir aapko kuch aur chahiye kya koi medicine chahiye kya then there there were were uh, telephones because earlier there were no mobiles तो land lines थी तो land line पे phone लगा के रखे हुए थे कई वहां पे और वहां से आप अपने घर पे बात कर सकते हैं वहां बता सकते हैं कि हम सकुशल हैं या हमें चोटे आई है या हम थोड़ा बहुत जल गए so these are the things that aap bachcho ko dekhiye ncc ke bachcho ko kaise humne training diye the unko ki unhone us samay emergency mein aake aur sahayata kari logo ki so this, this is why every child should learn about these aspects the disaster management how to handle the situation how to help people and all those things so in case of an emergency situation government non government organization should come forward to help the people the police the guard so that we can uh, help people to survive you know and this is possible only when everyone get together and that is why team work is very important now coming to the emergency management uh, so when we say emergency management there are various aspects so main of main aspects are mitigation uh, preparedness and response and recovery so mitigation can be done only after identifying the risk preparedness entails taking uh, appropriate steps to ensure effective and timely response and recovery response includes taking appropriate measure to respond to the emergency and recovery is the activities uh, that uh, that are vital life support system to minimum operating standards for example clean up temporary housing food availability so once that disaster is over we need to work on the recovery so this is all about the emergency management now coming to the uh, fire emergency or fire disaster uh, the unarmed security guard may encounter at the workplace this kind of fire disaster or a fire emergency 
uh, which might be caused because of the disposal of burning matchsticks and cigarette butts, electrical short circuit, like I mentioned about the train. Somebody might have uh, thrown the cigarette or something like that, or electrical short circuit might have happened in one of the coaches and this disaster happened. So this is why we have to be very careful and that is why we are training our students on all these aspects. So the three components of fire which everyone should understand is that the heat, oxygen and fuel. You might have seen like in kitchen, we are using you know the cylinders. So at times that these cylinders, they catch fire. So what is that action that we need to take? So uh, these are the things we always, we should always keep a fire extinguisher handy in our home so that whenever some fire, small fires which can become a big fire uh, can be handled easily by uh, using the fire extinguisher and can rouse that fire. So fire may be divided into five classes. We have talked about A, B, C, D and K fire. So I'm not going to get into the details of the fire because of the shortage of time. But then uh, these are the classifications of fire which you can see on the screen. And one should all know about for which fire type, which extinguishing agent should be used or which fire extinguisher should be used. So we are teaching our children about all these aspects like what are the classes of fire, how they can be extinguished, what are the different types of fire extinguishers like wet chemical, foam, water, halon, powder and carbon dioxide. Now coming to the use of fire extinguisher, this everyone, not just children or adults, every uh, citizen of this country should know how to use the fire extinguisher. Why? Because anytime if this kind of emergency occurs, everyone should, just like we say for CPR, so CPR everyone should know because that helps in, you know, preventing the, again, the heart attack. If somebody has undergone a heart attack, you can give CPR to revive that person. So similarly, uh, everyone should know about this use of fire extinguishers. So what do we do? We pull the extinguisher pin. We aim at the base of the fire. This is very important. Not over the fire, but at the base of the fire. Squeeze the fire extinguishers and, and sweep the extinguishers nozzle to the side so that the fire gets extinguished. Now, uh, we are also teaching about responding to fire. So what is the first action that the, uh, the guard should take? Stay calm and ask all the person present in the place not to panic. Alert the people around and dial the fire service helpline number. Help people to escape from the fire exit. If the fire is spawned, extinguish the fire using the right type of extinguisher, which depends on the type of fire. Responding to fire. So how do we respond to the fire? We are teaching all these to our students. Uh, so rescue, alarm, contain, and evacuate. These are the various aspects that students are learning. So carrying out search and rescue operation, sounding the alarm by pulling the lever of the firebox and calling out from a safe distance, containing the fire by putting non-combustible barriers such as heap of sand in the way. The guard must help people evacuate the affected building immediately. So similarly, they, they need to make way for the nearest assembly point or designated area in the case of emergency. And if someone is left trapped inside the affected building, then the unarmed security guard must immediately inform the firefighting personnel at the place to save the life of that person. Now, we are also teaching about the first aid. So, for example, burn. So, in case of burn, what we need to do? So, immediately remove clothing and jewelry from the affected area in order to protect the skin. Help the victim and put out the burn area under running water so, so that for at least 20 minutes. This is all, these aspects are covered in the textbook. So fire drill. So drilling is where, so every institution should also organize the drill in their premises so that everyone should know where the, uh, these fire extinguishers are kept. And all. Similarly, uh, first aid for electric shocks. Similarly, uh, we are also teaching about personal 
protective equipment, tools and equipment required during patrolling. Then the unit three, which is on documentation. So we are also training our students on the use of various registers and how to prepare documents. So documentation refers to the process of gathering information and evidences, which may serve as a vital records of proof of evidence. Because in court cases, these evidences are required. So it needs to be done as per the standard operating procedures and as specified by the security agency. So they have to keep written records. Verbal uh, statements are not going to really do anything in when they have to uh, put the evidence in the court. So they should have uh, the written documents in place. So some of the important registers that they should be maintaining at the gate office of a facility or a residential premise are a visitor's registers, vehicle in and out register, keys in and out register, officer in and out register. So these are some of the registers that they have to keep or maintain uh, at the premises. Then we have also included authorization and access control. And what are the documents for access control? So like employee's identity card, material gate pass, contractor and vendor vehicle pass, employee vehicle pass, contractor worker photo pass, temporary employee entry pass, visitor's pass, visitor vehicle pass, and returnable material gate pass. These are the different passes which one has to check when the material is getting in or going out of the premises. Then we have given the documentation guidelines like uh, audience, they should know about the audience, the purpose of the documentation, recording and reporting. And we have also given the guiding questions in report writing, like who was involved, when did the event happen, or the incident happen, where did it happen, what happened, why did it happen, how did it happen. So he has to answer all these questions. So thank you very much, uh, viewers, for your patient hearing. I suppose you must have got a fair idea of what we have included in the textbook of the unarmed security guard for class 10. And uh, do join these courses if, uh, because it will help you not only just to get into this occupation, but if you are an aspirant for getting into Army, Navy, or Air Force, or police. This will definitely will help you in getting into one of these armed forces. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for providing us a fair idea of this job role that is unarmed security guard through your presentation and through your kind words. Thank you. We still have five minutes left in this session, and we have certain questions. If you allow, then could we take some questions? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Sir, as we are discussing about this particular job role that uh, deals with security, and when we talk about security sector, everybody feels that there's a hardship. There are certain challenges that requires physical strength, then the kind of rigorous training, uh, the presence of mind that is required in certain circumstances. So it seems to be a bit difficult. Um, I yes. think it seems to be a bit difficult not only to the general public, but also to the students as well. So some students might be taken aback that it's going to be tough. So how to deal yeah. with that? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a very pertinent question that you have asked, uh, particularly when we are talking about gender sensitivity and gen gender equality. Uh, uh, see, earlier, girls never used to go into the defense forces, like the armed forces yeah. or the army, and particularly army. Uh, Air Force, they used to go into that, but, but not in Army and uh, Navy. But now that barrier is broken by themselves. So they have to take this onus. The girls and the women, they have to take this onus. They have to be very strong enough in order to accept this as a challenge. We cannot just uh, order everything like you bring an act that every girl child should also get into this security uh, or army and all those things which israelis have their, that kind of system where every citizen of israel needs to get into the training of our 
But being a democratic country where every person has equal rights and particularly the social rights and all, we, we have to be very liberal in our approach. We have to find ways of attracting our children to this particular aspect of learning about security, of learning about disaster management, of learning about uh, you know how to keep yourself secure through self-defense techniques, so learning self. So we need to introduce more of these kind of skills uh, in our school of self-defense techniques so that they once they get that feel of it, that this is very important, and everyone should feel secure when they are in some place and uh, we need to catch the thieves and we need to do this and we have to be strong enough even if we, if we are at home and somebody tries to enter our home we are able to resist that uh, but how would you be able to do that if you have learned all those self-defense techniques so we need to reason it out also give them opportunity tell them what are the career prospects they cannot just get into this uh, army or air force or navy, but they can also become, uh, they can get into police or become a security guard. So these are the things that we need to tell our children. We, so more of an awareness kind of thing, sensitization, orientation, all these aspects need to be taken care of in our schools and colleges. So that more and more girls and even the third gender, they also should join this uh, security because when a third gender enters into a premises, who is going to, you know, uh, frisk that person? That is a challenge for us. So we need to make provisions for that. So this is another aspect. Thank you for explaining that. And also recently, I would like to add to that, that recently the government has also opened gates for certain uh, examinations, say entrance examinations, particularly for girls. Well, that's a great initiative. In this session, we are left by just last two minutes. So, sir, yeah. any message so from have, your end? I have one message for all of you. Like, there are now BVOC courses, uh, Bachelor in Vocational Studies. Now, these, uh, some of the institutions are now offering these uh, BVOC courses uh, in private security or security per se. And what is the advantage of BWAP courses? So a student can enter into uh, the first semester, gets a certificate. I mean, after passing the first semester, they can exit and get a certificate. They can uh, complete two semesters and can get a diploma. They can complete four semesters and can get an advanced diploma. They can uh, complete six semesters and they can get degree, the bachelor's degree. So it's a multi-entry and multi-exist system under the National Skills Qualifications Framework. And this has uh, been introduced by the University Grants Commission, UGC in short, what we call it. And uh, this, this is a very useful program for those who want to pursue higher education. So even if they don't want to exit uh, after getting training in the schools, or in any other institution, they can go for higher education. So this is the another advantage which I just wanted to. So vertical mobility of further education and training is also ensured for all the children who wants to get into security. Thank you. Thank you for such an informative session and thank you for highlighting the different aspect that deals with this job role that is unarmed security guard. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Namaskar. So, uh, viewers, in this particular session, we were discussing about the sector that deals with private security and the job role was unarmed security guard. Once again, I would like to thank our panelist, our resource person for this session. Thank you, sir. And thanks to all the viewers who have contributed to their beautiful comments in the comment section in this particular session. Stay tuned to NCRD. We'll be back at 2 p.m. with another session. Namaskar.